Welcome to the Way to Go podcast. I'm Bill McMinn, along with Steve Arslick, both uh, pastors for Eagleville Bible Church, and glad to be here, Steve. Yeah, glad to be here, too. Glad to talk. Anybody, you know, if anybody's listening, just uh, glad you're joining and, and giving it some thought, and hope you're having a great day. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one of the things I want to talk about was redemption from the perspective of, I always learned it when I was in college and seminary, that there's this term, and you see it often in the Bible. I mean, it's the Old Testament, New Testament, and it's, you know, we, we think of redeem, it would be like, oh yeah, I'm redeeming a coupon. You know, uh -huh. <laughs> When redemption is used in the Bible, like they would actually have slaves and they would sell them. And then if somebody bought them and set them free, that was a redemption. Like I was, I'm buying you and I'm, I'm paying the price, and I'm going to give you your freedom. And what God does for us is he buys us and he gives us our freedom. And I think that's an important concept because we want to live free. Right, right. And there's a lot of hurts out there, Steve. Yeah, and it, I mean, it's one of those things kind of reminds me, think about the cross, you know, Jesus paid the price on the cross. Right. He paid the cost, you know, and you've been bought for a cost, the Bible tells us. And so, therefore, right. we really aren't our own. We are his. And so, we have been redeemed. We are Christ now. And, and and this is where it should be a reflective of where we're going in our lives and things that we're doing and, right. and our attitudes, our hope, our joy, our patience, all those things. Right. Yeah. I mean, there's a definitely a lot more positive lifestyle to live than one of being in, let's say, in bondage. And sometimes, if you really think about your life, there, whether it's some kind of sorrow, some kind of anxiety, uh, there's something you're doing. It could be a temper problem. Uh, some people struggle with immorality or addiction. I mean, there are certainly certain things. And here's what the Bible says, Isaiah 44, 22. I've swept away your offenses like a cloud. Your sins like the morning mist. Return to me, for I have redeemed you. Now, as a guy who's a photographer and somebody who does go out to look at clouds and you know cloud structures super important to me uh because it makes buildings look better it makes barns look better it makes the water look better it makes sunset look better typically you know on sun depending on how many clouds are in the sky like it's it's important i've always been amazed at how fast a cloud can disappear or how fast the sky can change and i've, I've known this that if you see something cool in a cloud right now you better take the picture right now because it is ever changing and ever moving. And so when he says this, that I swept your, you know, away your offenses like a cloud. Yeah. You know, I kind of get that because I've seen the skies clear. I, the sins like the morning mist, we've all seen the mist evaporate and just not be there anymore. And that's the, the offenses, the things that we've done against God. Maybe we've run from yeah. God. We haven't listened to God. We're just doing our own thing. And then we start realizing how wrong we've been and that we've made some mistakes in our life. It's nice to know, well, hey, at least to start with God in your vertical relationship, I've I've sweep I've swept that away for I've redeemed you. Yeah. And that's it, it's an amazing truth. And it's amazing that God would even do some of these. I love the language of the prophets, you know, whether it's Isaiah, you know, I love the imagery, even you know, Hosea uses uh, uh, uh you know, with his wife Gomer. Uh, God uses his wife Gomer, who's this unfaithful woman as representative kind of like God's people who are unfaithful. And God tells Hosea to finally go and redeem his wife who's been off whoring and been sold around and passed around. And actually nobody will redeem her, but Hosea will. And it's right. like a representative of even God. And the same thing is like just in that, all that, that, that those bad things of the past, all the bad things that we've ever done or all the things that we're, we maybe even continue to struggle with today is stealing our joy, and our peace. You know, we have the opportunity to be redeemed. And, and now that redemption, then I think I've said it, but I've said earlier is like, it should shape our path forward. Right. You know, it, it should shape our mindsets. It should put us in a, uh, uh, the right perspective of how, where God wants to take us, where he wants to lead us. Well, if you're in some ugly spot, Steve, I mean, like it could be addiction and uh, celebrate recovery. Certainly it's part of what they deal with. You got to remember how nasty that was. I know for me, like when I've come out of situations, I always have to remember that was not a pleasant place. Oh no, never. You do is. not want to go back there. Like no. there, and, and but you forget that because sin also has pleasure. Like there are certain fun things about <laughs> doing the wrong oh, yeah. thing, right? I mean, so there are certain reasons why. Hey, people like that high. People like to be immoral. People like. I mean, there are certain reasons why there are certain pleasures inherent with it. But you got to remember the price tag. The price tag is now I'm bound to that. Now I'm stuck there, and I like the fact that he turns us loose. So really we got to walk back to God at, at some point. I think sometimes when we're away, it behooves us to walk back to God. And I think people too, yeah, the prodigal is a great example of kind of filling in for God and mm -hmm. human relationships I think of both at the same time. But, you know, the prodigal son's the guy that just totally thumbed his nose at his dad, disrespected him and left, went and lived a wild life, 
comes down to nothing. It's just a life of ruination. His dad could have told him yeah, that. Yeah. Right? I mean, oh, yeah. What, Walking away from God's devastation. Right. I mean, it's, there's nothing you, good there. <laughs> right. There's nothing good. I mean, I've seen people make decisions and you you know, you watch them going into it and you know, no good will come of it. Oh, yeah. Like I mean, it I, says, you're not listening, no good will come. But still, there's always got to be the opportunity after someone hits a low or they, they hit that sadness because of their decisions to return like the prodigal son who came back to his dad and his dad was happy to see him. And I would hope that any sinner that's walked away, even in relationship with us, the church, God, we know God's happy to see him back, that we would be happy to see him back too, to say, you know what, that that's okay. You know, if you can see it and you can come back and make those words, hey, I've sinned against heaven against you, dad. You know what I mean? I've, I've made some mistakes and you kind of acknowledge that. At least that's part of that redemption. You know, you're starting to make a step back in the right direction. Yeah. And I think sometimes people get intimidated or they're afraid because, I mean, I heard a testimony of a guy the other day that, you know, he was just terrified that he would get released from the place that he's carrying at because currently at, because if he got at, back out into the world that he might not be able to survive. Right. And it was, it was, it was actually kind of frightening listening to him I'm emotional. And, and I, and I was trying to encourage because much like you just said here from the Isaiah, it says as quickly as we've got there, as quickly God can remove these things from us. We have been redeemed. What Jesus Christ did in the cross has been done. Right. The power, the ability is there. It's ours for the taking. And I think about Paul, though, too, and I think about, like, this guy where Paul says, you know, whenever I try to do good, evil's right there with me. Right. The same way I always equate, like, the barrel of monkeys. You know, the, the barrel of monkeys is never far away from us. It's, it's where are we going to choose to be. We can choose grace, we can choose redemption, or we can choose to stay too near to the barrel of monkeys right. or too near to that evil, that sin is right there to crowd. And I think about some of these things, but the thing is, I look back to, is Jesus took that act to come and to redeem us. Right. Even when we weren't even aware. Right. He did those things. And I think we, we belittle the power of that, and we focus so much on the barrel of the monkeys or the fear. Or if I, I, I think people are intimidated by fear nowadays. I mean, we see it even more so even with this latest pandemic. You know, right. it's like people are so intimidated by fear that they, they, they forget about a loving, almighty sovereign God. Right. And it's like, I'm so fearful that if I go here, that somehow I will have maybe outstretched this redemption. Right. I have outreached God somehow. Or I can't do it. I just can't, can't do, do it. it. Yeah, and you can do it. Can't and do that's it. the thing. And that, I you think it's like a free. fallacy. It's like a deception to keep you from actually finding that freedom. Well, Steve, I'll go one step further. Uh, when they were, when you walk away and you try to do what's right, a lot of times it's not an easy path. No. It's just not. And when you think about Moses leading Israel out of Egypt, and that was a redemption. They were enslaved. Moses came to get them out, to take them to the promised land. Along that path, as it got hard, they several times said, we want to go back to Egypt. Let's get a leader, and we're going to go back to Egypt, which was ridiculous yeah. because that was the place. But even in our dark caves that sometimes we come out of, there's somehow some comfort there for us that we want to go back because we're used to those paths, we're used to those people, we're used to those ways. And sometimes we forget that, okay, this is a different kind of heart that I'm going through right yeah. now, but this is a much better path because this is going to take me to the promised land. There's nothing behind you. Yeah, and, and I think you remember, where, there's nothing behind you. Yeah, and I think that's where we got to make these conscious choices because I think about like the Israelites. Man, they were, they were romanticizing when they were in slavery. Oh, how much meat there was. All right. the leeks and the right. vegetables. and They're romanticizing <laughs> their misery. I mean, it's amazing how we do that in our own minds. We'll, you know, kind of go back over here and we'll make it sexy or we'll make it attractive or, and, and we're forgetting all the great things that God has delivered and brought over here. I don't know why we missed that. Right. And I, so often we keep, we keep missing that truth, <laughs> these things that are available I, to I us. don't feel a lot, of, like, there's not a lot of great things to shame. There's not a lot of great things to bust our relationships. There's not a lot of great things to feeling like you, you let someone down. You know, for me... It's like uh, some things we do, obviously, we probably, it doesn't ha hit us with the weight, but there are other things like big deal things that are entrapments and real bondage and stuff you need to stay away. I'm going to throw pornography in there. I'd throw immorality in there. Mm -hmm. I'd throw even a dishonest, deceptive, rotten lifestyle. You know, if you're just a rotten, bitter person, even that, it's like there's a lot of pain that comes out. of There's a lot of brokenness there. Why would you want to stay there? Like what in the world? I, I remember reading in Romans 6, and he was saying that uh, we're dead to sin alive to God. 
and then we had to reckon ourselves that like we had to tell ourselves that and remind ourselves hey you're dead to it you can mm -hmm. walk out and i always thought it like pictured it like a jail cell and like i have been in jail i came to christ jail cell open i can leave it and all the sin that had held me all i had to do is walk out yeah but it was up to me to walk out and so that's where, you know, you, we realize God loves us, but we've got to do something to, first of all, return to God. And I think remembering the, the deep love of God in Ephesians 1, 7, it says, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. You can't, this would be like, hey, I'm really thirsty. I don't know if Lake Erie is enough water for me <laughs> to yeah, drink. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. You, right. Yeah. The grace of God is such, when it says that our forgiveness is in according, it conforms to the riches of God's grace, which we don't deserve anywhere, and it's a surplus of it. There's no nothing that you've done that can't be absorbed into God's grace that cannot be forgiven through the blood of Christ. There's nothing if we're willing to come back to him. And I love the fact that that grace allows us to come back. It allows us to return. It allows us to get cleaned up. It allows our offenses, as he says in Isaiah 44, 22, to be swept away. And I hope that that's how we look at it. When people truly, it could be even our own family members, that they've done wrong to us, but they come back and they make amends for that, that those, those clouds are now swept away and we don't have to worry about it. I think some of the problem is we just, uh, sometimes people don't know what life is like. I, 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 either we put God in such a small box or we're not quite sure as the things that we've become grown accustomed to or comfortable with, it's almost hard to envision a life with God outside of these things. I mean, I remember the first time I stopped drinking and I was go, I really wanted to stop drinking. I would got myself in so much trouble and I know I needed to do something, but I almost didn't know what to do. It was so sad that I was, you know, I was in Baltimore. I was living in an apartment down there at the time. And, and, uh, you know, I, I was waiting to go to a meeting and I was so steeped in my former lifestyle that even waiting to go to a meeting, the only place that I could think to go to was to go into some bar and order a Coke and wait till I could get there. You know what I mean? And cause it was like, I was, I didn't know right. that I could go somewhere else. Right. It's like, I'm, I was almost like so steeped in that type of thinking trapped in that mindset that I didn't know anything differently. And that's why I try to encourage you. You got to look around. There's other places you could, right. I could have went to a coffee shop. I mean, I could have <laughs> right. I mean, just stayed right. at the apartment till it was a little bit closer to get, I could have done so many different things, but I couldn't see that there's something different to go do. Right. And, and I think people get caught up in that. Uh, they, in it, they, we miss the, I don't know. We missed the bigger picture. We missed the magnitude of who God is. We missed the magnitude of his grace. We, 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 we missed the magnitude of the blessing that he wants to bestow upon us. And we, we, we continue to try to skirt the, the bounds of right. his, you know. Well, how about this? You get yourself to a point where Paul says in first Corinthians chapter six, I think it's eight through 10, somewhere in there, but it's, you know, you guys were drunkards and swindlers yeah. and moral, all these things that you were, you were, but now right. you're 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 justified. Yeah. You're made righteous. Right. You're right. It, that that's not who you are today. And I think that even the person who comes out of addiction should not always look at themselves as an addict or an alcoholic. Should not always look at themselves as an alcoholic or somebody that maybe just did stupid stuff. Once they get redeemed, they get back on God's path. It's not a matter of I'm always going to be seen this way. You know, no. If right. if you really change, there's no point in having to look at yourself in a certain way. I think that a lot of times for you and, and for those listening, there are times where God's trying to get you back on the path. You need to listen to people who have been there, who care about you and are trying to help you get on a happier path. Just listen to them, you know, listen to them. And if you've been ignoring, ignoring, then I at some point you got to start changing some of that stuff. It could be a kid with a parent who the kids constantly not listening to the parent, constantly running into the problems, running into the problems with mom and dad, running into the problems with school, running into the problem with coaches and teachers and friends. And finally, just because you've been in a pattern of two or three years of not listening to parents or whatever it's been, doesn't mean you can't start changing that and start saying, you know what? I, I'm, a, I'm at home. I need to start respecting my mom and dad. I need to start listening. I need to start listening to what my teachers are telling me. I need to start reading my Bible. There are certain things that you can do to start turning it around. But at some point, I don't care like how tangled or how messy you've made it. There, don't get frustrated and say, well, I might as well just stay here. I might as well just stay right here because I've done so many stupid things. You can come back. Please come back. Yeah, what, Start doing smart things. One of my favorite verses in Romans is Romans 4, 17. It says, our God is a God who gives life to the dead and calls those things that are not as though they are. 
And you mentioned here in First Corinthians six, where we talk about the things that we were. I think the problem is so many people get stuck with they're still in the were, what we were, right. not what God has called us to be. I think sometimes in a world where we're, we're labeled with identity, it's one of the strengths of Eagleville has always been. People talk about being welcoming, love. You can come in, you can be whoever you are. We don't care what your past was. What is today? You know, because so oftentimes, even sometimes, people will identify. They'll stand up. I, I, I I'm so and so, and and I am X Y Z. Well, no, that's what you were. Your identity isn't what you were. Right. Your identity is today in Jesus Christ and right. who you are now. You are a new creation. You're going forward. But the world wants to label you. Right. You are this. Right. We've almost taken to come out of drug addiction or come out of alcoholism or come out of something. We almost want to make that the hero. Right. You know, there's nothing glory. There's no glory there. Right. That was death and destruction. You're no, not a words, hero because you come hey, out of my it. My name something. is such and such, and I am. I, a, I am a right. alcoholic, or right. I'm a drug addict, or, right. or I'm a, a victim of abuse, or I'm. The, we want to put so many labels. Those are things that we were. Right. We, we're still we're so stuck in what we were, and we forget that God calls those <laughs> right. not as they were, but as they are. Right. Well, when Jesus and, Christ changed a leper and cleaned him, did he constantly call himself a leper? Oh, for the you're rest a leper forever. Life? No, you're not. Once you're clean, you're clean. And what do people want to do, though, too? And this is one of the things I think Christians, we have to be careful. You may know somebody's past. That person isn't what it was. Maybe they had problems. Maybe they had difficulties. Maybe they did go to jail. Maybe they were the deadbeat dad. Maybe they were a, a, an unfaithful partner. Maybe they were this, that, whatever the case may be. If, if that's the only lens you're going to look at that person and you're forgetting all the credible evidence you see in the change in this person's life and you're not supporting and helping that, well, God's called them to something. Right. Are we going to support it? Right. Or are we going to judge them? Right. You know, so, so, no, no, support them. Absolutely. Label them. We no, can't I agree. identify them. We've got to see them as something different. I agree, man. God does. And here's some encouraging, and maybe you need to hear this today. Uh, Acts 3.19, repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. And that's the key. You want your sins wiped out, you want a fresh start, come to God. The times are refreshing may come from the Lord. And I love that idea that God just wants to bring a new spirit. And, you know, uh, David prayed, you know, Lord, you know, uh, restore to me the joy of my salvation, put a steadfast spirit within me. I, I like the fact that refreshing and restoration and energy can come from God as we turn back to him. And in John 10, 10, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I've come that they might have life and have it to the full. So if you're suffering by making bad choices, start making good choices, right? Mm -hmm. And understand the, the devil wants you in misery, not God. Absolutely. The devil wants you having a hard time and, and being broken and, and being having busted relationships with your old pals. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes they need to be busted, but I'm saying you're good pals. He wants that. And sometimes with your family members and what, and that's what he wants. That's not what God wants. He wants you to have life and have it to the full. And that's what we need to focus on. Is your life fulfilling right now? Is it satisfying? And if it's not satisfying, is it because you've been walking a bad path? This led to a lot of misery and destruction. What has it been? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, Satan wants to keep us in that were identity. Right. This is what you were. This is what you are and tries to keep that deception going. And I think so oftentimes, I, I, I think about God, you know, some of the things God, he knows who his people are. He's calling us out. He has come and he has enabled you to see. He has unveiled you. He has enabled you to see the grace that he's giving you. He's enabled you to see some of the sins of your past. He's enabled you these things to come to him through the son. And so one, I think about some of this is like God at the time probably did allow some, of these, obviously allowed these consequences to come in our lives for bad choices, bad decisions. There may have been a terribly bad harvest. We're still reaping. But the thing is, is I love the promises of God to you. We're talking about his love. And I think of it, Joel in chapter two, uh, verse 25, uh, uh, where, you know, in the story of Joel, you know, God had sent a plague of locusts on the people to punish them for their sins. You know, like there's the consequences for our sins that we're still suffering through even in this day. But God said, even though you have suffered these things, if you repent and you turn towards me, and just like I said, I'll, I'll give you this refreshing, but in, in Joel chapter two, he says this, I will restore to you the years the locusts have eaten. Right. In other and, words, you're going to get back what you lost. I, I think it's a great verse. I was just thinking about it the other day myself, actually, because I... I think it's so powerful and I've seen it in my own life. And sometimes it's not the things that I've lost from what I've done. I've lost because of what other people have done. Yes. And it's there. In other words, I suffer and, and we all do at times, like we suffer because of somebody else's bad decision. Oh, absolutely. Right. And so then I, I was, because I was connected to you and you went down, you drug me into your misery and mayhem because now either I have to replace you, you know, maybe you cheated from the company and now I got to replace you. I got to go through a pain in the neck because of what you did. 
I think even from that perspective, Steve, and we'll close the show with this, I think that's a powerful concept. God will return, because I've seen God return to me the things that I've lost because of other people's bad choices. He always takes care of you, and never forget it. You just need to return to God. Thanks for tuning in to the Way to Go podcast. Hope that you have a great and awesome week.